Why F1 teams use green paint on their cars during testing? F1 is the most technologically advanced sport there is. But with every F1 team using state-of-the-art simulation software and wind tunnels to assist in designing the aerodynamics of their cars, it's all the more surprising that they continue to use some seemingly antiquated methods of gathering data about their cars. One of these methods is the use of so-called flow-vis paint, which we saw a lot of on the first day of pre-season practice in Bahrain. So let's look at how teams use this fluorescent paint to enhance their designs, as well as some other intriguing technical details we saw in Bahrain. Formula One cars have complex aerodynamic designs that carefully direct airflow onto particular areas of the vehicle. Although teams can simulate this using wind tunnels and computer models, nothing compares to the real thing for accuracy. And something called flow visualization paint is a useful tool to test the aerodynamics in real-world conditions. It's a fast-drying paint made from a fluorescent powder mixed with a light oil and is then applied to the car. The oil from the mixture evaporates as the car travels around the circuit, allowing the paint to dry as it is moved by airflow. Many teams will send their cars out on the track during pre-season testing with a bright green liquid on various parts. After a few laps, the car will return to the pits, where engineers will closely examine the trail left and take pictures to study. While the paint is still wet, the air pushes it around the car. As a result, the paint can visually depict how the air interacts with the car's various body parts and where it flows around the vehicle. This enables teams to evaluate how closely their computer simulations and wind tunnel tests reflect what actually occurs when the car is on the track. In Formula One, one of the most crucial aspects of car design is understanding how the air interacts with the vehicle. Teams can use the information gathered from the paint to plan their future aerodynamic upgrades and tweak setup changes where necessary to get the most out of the car. When it comes to Flowviz paint, bright green is the most popular color, but the teams also use a number of other colors. This is done simply to make it more visible, or to help distinguish multiple sections of airflow if they're using it on multiple parts of the car at one time. With the car covered in Flowviz paint, it needs to get out on the track as quickly as possible before it dries. As a result, the Flowviz paint is also typically applied to the car just before it leaves the garage. Teams in Formula One must rely on simulations and scale model testing in wind tunnels to understand how the aerodynamics of their cars function, because on-track testing is so scarcely available. So whenever the teams have a chance, they use Flowviz paint to test their aerodynamics on the racetrack. Teams have been able to create reasonably accurate models and simulations of their cars in their factories over many years of testing and development, but nothing compares to the real thing. Flowviz does have its limitations, and the teams may not like how quickly the paint moves or dries. For instance, they might want to observe the airflow over their car at a particular location on the track, but by the time the car gets there, the paint may already have dried. The importance of Flowviz paint, however, cannot be overstated, even if it's a fairly rudimentary way to see how the air flows over an F1 car. 2010 saw the introduction of Flowviz paint among F1 teams, with McLaren being the first to use it on their car. However, when something works, others take notice, and the rest of the F1 paddock quickly followed suit and started using Flowviz on their own cars. Since its introduction, the aerodynamic components on the cars have developed massively. Nevertheless, Flowviz has established itself as a standard for Formula One teams, and all teams now use the paint during testing. Aston Martin taking a big step over the winter. One of the biggest upsets of pre-season testing was the boost in performance we saw from Aston Martin. Even though there have been challenges, including the absence of a full-time driver and two problems during Thursday's running, the AMR23 has performed admirably, especially when compared to where the team was a year ago. Only Max Verstappen was able to post a faster time than Fernando Alonso on the opening day, and their performance remained strong heading into Friday's action. 
Aston Martin have lofty goals for not just this season, but also the longer term, and are aiming to move up past their P7 finish in 2022. The car has caught the attention of other teams, including Haas and Kevin Magnussen, and is the first to be fully designed under the direction of former Red Bull Head of Aerodynamics, Dan Fellows. When asked to name one team that has stood out so far during pre-season testing, it was the Silverstone outfit that Magnussen mentioned. I think Aston Martin looked fast, Magnussen told the media. They seem to constantly be doing good long runs, and when they try to put in a fast time, they seem to do it as well. So I think they look like they've taken a big step. Lance Stroll unlikely to make Bahrain GP Lance Stroll was unable to participate in the Bahrain preseason test, which got away on Thursday due to a training accident on his bicycle earlier this week. Team principal Mike Crack maintains that the decision was precautionary, but he declines to say at this time whether the Canadian will be forced to miss the season's opening round at the same venue due to the injury. When asked if Stroll would be available for the first race in a week, Crack said, we will let you know in time, but added that test and reserve driver Filip Dragovic is there to replace him if needed. Stroll is thought to have suffered injuries to his hand and wrist, and some reports claim he may even have fractured his wrist. Should Aston Martin require a replacement for Bahrain, it will be Dragovic and not his fellow Aston Martin reserve Van Duren, who joins Fernando Alonso on the grid. The straightforward explanation is that Van Duren is preoccupied with his FE commitments, while Dragovic tests the AMR23 during F1's pre-season testing. We discussed the situation, Van Duren, who is in Cape Town for the Formula E race, said in an interview. I knew and the team knew it. I'm taken by Formula E this weekend in Cape Town. I will not be able to participate in the tests in Bahrain, unfortunately. And the race next Sunday? It's quite a different scenario for me. If Lance is not available, I wouldn't be surprised if Philippe made the race. It's a little frustrating for me, but on the other hand, you have to understand it. Mercedes experience baffling drop in performance. Another team that has suffered some major hiccups is Mercedes. The team had a successful opening day on Thursday with no indication of the bouncing problems that dogged its W13 the previous year. Trackside engineering director Andrew Shovlin even called the W14 a much calmer and more stable platform with faultless reliability on day one. The team, however, lost the final hour and a half of day two when Russell stopped due to a hydraulics problem and couldn't return to the track. We've not had a strong second day, Shovlin admitted at the end of Friday. But Russell's reliability issues, which only allowed him to complete 26 laps, were not the only factor in Mercedes's Friday plight as it struggled to find the right car balance. Lewis Hamilton logged a reasonably impressive 72 laps in the W14 in the first half of the day. But on multiple occasions, his car exhibited major rear instability, requiring the seven-time world champion to manage some sliding on corner exits. Stopping on track with a reliability issue isn't great, and we have struggled to get the car balanced well across the changing conditions," Shovlin continued. We've got some investigations going on to understand why this has been such a challenge today when yesterday it was fairly straightforward. The team still uncovered some interesting things in the data throughout the day, according to Russell, and these will undoubtedly be analyzed in an effort to improve the car's performance. Earlier, Russell downplayed hopes for the first race of the year, saying it would be a stretch to think Mercedes could compete with Red Bull. Hamilton, on the other hand, disclosed that the team is working incredibly hard to maximize the performance of the W14, and that there is a lot of work planned before the show begins at the Bahrain Grand Prix. What do you think about the pre-season test at Bahrain? Which teams have impressed the most? Will Mercedes be able to turn things around this year? Please let us know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking it and subscribing. Be sure to click the bell icon to be notified of future uploads. Thanks for watching.